from its orbits to its temperatures to its place in the grand scale of the solar system and more. Join me as we show you some facts and history about Mercury. Number 10. The History of Mercury Before we really deep dive into the facts about the planet, let's talk about the beginnings of the planet in terms of its discovery from our perspective. Obviously, Mercury was made billions of years ago, but when exactly did we discover it? The earliest known recorded observation of Mercury are from the Mull Appen tablets. These observations were most likely made by an Assyrian astronomer around the 14th century BC. The cuneiform name used to designate Mercury on the Mull Appen tablets is translated as the jumping planet. Babylonian records of Mercury date back to the first millennium BC. The Babylonians called the planet Nabu, after the messenger to the gods in their mythology, which is ironic because Mercury is the name of the messenger god to the Roman pantheon. Many other civilizations found out about Mercury in their own ways, including the ancient Greeks, Roman, Chinese, and even the Maya. The first telescopic observations of Mercury were made by Galileo in the early 17th century. Although he observed phases when he looked at Venus, his telescope was not powerful enough to see the phases of Mercury. In 1631, Pierre Gassendi made the first telescopic observations of the transit of a planet across the Sun when he saw a transit of Mercury predicted by Johannes Kepler. In 1639, Giovanni Zuppi used a telescope to discover that the planet had orbital phases similar to Venus and the Moon. The observation demonstrated conclusively that Mercury orbited around the Sun. In the 1880s, Giovanni Schiaparelli mapped the planet more accurately and even perfectly detailed its orbital time around the Sun. As more time went on, more time was devoted to studying Mercury, including in the 1970s when NASA launched the first craft to Mercury via the Mariner 10. The Messenger and the Bempi Colombo would later follow in its footsteps. For the record, the Bempi Colombo is set to reach Mercury in 2025. Though there is still a lot we don't know about Mercury, we do know a lot based on probes and pictures and studies that have tided us over for the last few decades, which is why Mercury, like other planets, is well known enough to teach about. Number 9. Orbits and Rotations Mercury is a very interesting planet in a whole host of ways, not the least of which is because of the fact that it is indeed the closest planet to the Sun. Because of this, it has certain perks as well as disadvantages. First and foremost, it's the closest planet to the Sun and the second hottest planet in the solar system after Venus. It's only 29 million miles from the Sun at its closest. Now, yes, I'm sure this seems like a long distance, but when you're talking about the Sun, a Sun that is 860,000 miles in diameter, that's not as far as you think. Because of this, it only takes about 88 days for Mercury to have a year-long rotation around the Sun, which is elliptical in nature for the record. And as for how long a day is, well, that's where the twist comes in. Because you see, a day is the amount of time it takes for the planet to rotate around its axis, right? Well, for Mercury, it has a very slow rotation. In fact, if you do the math, that would mean that the day count for about a year on Mercury is just over one and a half days. That's some really weird planet calendar, but that's just how Mercury is. Number 8. How hot does it get there? The surface temperature of Mercury ranges from 100 to 700 Kelvin, minus 173 to 427 degrees Celsius, minus 280 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit at most extreme places. It never rises above 180 Kelvin at the poles due to the absence of an atmosphere and a steep temperature gradient between the equator and the poles. The subsolar point reaches about 700 Kelvin during perihelion, 0 degrees west or 180 degrees west, but only 550 Kelvin at aphelion. On the dark side of the planet, temperatures average 110 Kelvin. The intensity of sunlight on Mercury's surface ranges between 4.59 and 10.61 times the solar constant. Although the daylight temperature at the surface of Mercury is generally extremely high, Observations strongly suggest that ice, frozen water, exists on Mercury. The floors of deep craters at the poles are never exposed to direct sunlight, and temperatures there remain below 102 Kelvin, far lower than the global average. Water ice strongly reflects radar, and observations by the 70-meter Goldstone Solar System radar and the VLA in the early 1990s revealed that there are patches of high radar reflection near the poles. Although ice was not the only possible cause of these reflective regions, 
astronomers think it was the most likely. Regardless of that though, these extreme temperatures are why Mercury is such a different planet compared to the rest of the solar system. Before we continue telling you about Mercury, be sure to like or dislike the video. That way we can continue to improve and make the best content possible for you the viewer. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Number 7. The Atmosphere When thinking about a planet, one of the most considered things is the atmosphere because through that we get a look at how the surface is affected and how life might be able to survive there. Mercury is too small and hot for its gravity to retain any significant atmosphere over long periods of time. It does have a tenuous surface-bound exosphere containing hydrogen, helium, oxygen, sodium, calcium, potassium and others at a surface pressure of less than approximately 0.5 NPA, 0.005 picobars. This exosphere is not stable. Atoms are continuously lost and replenished from a variety of sources. Hydrogen atoms and helium atoms probably come from the solar wind diffusing into Mercury's magnetosphere before later escaping back into space. Radioactive decay of elements within Mercury's crust is another source of helium, as well as sodium and potassium. Now, all of that being said, Mercury has a significant and apparently global magnetic field. According to measurements taken by Mariner 10, it is about 1.1% the strength of Earth's. The magnetic field strength at Mercury's equator is about 300 NT. Like that of Earth, Mercury's magnetic field is dipolar. Unlike Earth's, Mercury's poles are nearly aligned with the planet's spin axis. Measurements from both the Mariner 10 and the MESSENGER space probes have indicated that the strength and shape of the magnetic field are stable. It is likely that this magnetic field is generated by a dynamo effect in a manner similar to the magnetic field of Earth. This dynamo effect would result from the circulation of the planet's iron-rich liquid core. Particularly strong tidal effects caused by the planet's high orbital eccentricity would serve to keep the core in the liquid state necessary for this dynamo effect. Number 6. Life on Mercury? Given some of the things we just talked about, I'm sure it's a little weird for some of you that many think that there could have been life on Mercury at one point in time. And yet it's true. There may be scientific support based on studies reported in March of 2020 for considering that parts of the planet Mercury may have been habitable and perhaps that life forms, albeit likely primitive microorganisms, may have existed on the planet. The key words you have to remember here are may have existed and parts of the planet Mercury, because while it is a planet that has a very rough surface and very fluctuating temperatures, it's also a planet that is surprising in how it has both ice and water vapor, and water is a key basis for life anywhere, including on Earth and on Mercury. Granted, no actual proof has been found that life was on Mercury, or when it was there and when it apparently died out, but if there is even a small chance that it was there at one point, you can bet that people are going to look into it, because if something can live on Mercury, even in the smallest of forms, it gives many hope for life on many other planets in the universe. Number 5. Mercury is big in pop culture The smallest planet in our solar system has a big presence in our collective imagination, which is a bit interesting considering how much more popular the other planets are compared to Mercury. Scores of science fiction writers have been inspired by Mercury, including Isaac Asimov, C.S. Lewis, Ray Bradbury, Arthur C. Clarke, and H.P. Lovecraft. Television and film writers, too, have found the planet an ideal location for storytelling. In the animated television show Invader Zim, Mercury is turned into a prototype giant spaceship by the extinct Martians. And in the 2007 film Sunshine, the Icarus 2 spacecraft goes into orbit around Mercury to rendezvous with the Icarus 1. In the comic strip Calvin and Hobbes, Calvin and his classmate Susie give a presentation about Mercury, in which Calvin's contribution is full of questionable information. The planet Mercury was named after a Roman god with winged feet, says Calvin. Mercury was the god of flowers and bouquets, which is why today he is a registered trademark of FTT florists. Why they named a planet after this guy, I can't imagine. Despite Calvin's analysis, Mercury has been used even more than that, which goes to show that when it comes to storytelling, just about any planet is a viable option for something. Number 4. Natural Disasters Here's something you may not know. 
Because of its proximity to the Sun and the lack of a true atmosphere, Mercury has no seasons, not a single one, which you would think would mean that Mercury doesn't have any natural disasters happen to it like they are on Earth. But that is only half true. Yes, in regards to things like rainstorms or tornadoes or hurricanes, Mercury will never have to worry about those at all. However, in regards to earthquakes, it is believed to have them, but not in the way you're thinking. Earth has earthquakes because of tectonic activity, but in regards to Mercury, it likely has earthquakes because the Sun is quite literally shrinking the planet via its gravitational pull. What's more, because of the protective atmosphere and a weaker magnetosphere than what Earth has, Mercury is subjected to many different impacts from asteroids and meteors. Number 3. No moons or rings It may seem rather obvious to indicate that Mercury has no moon or no rings. But what makes that such an important fact is that it's one of the few planets in our solar system that doesn't have a moon. Think about it. How many planets in our solar system don't have a moon? The answer is two, Mercury and Venus. The reason they don't have a moon is honestly very simple. Because of how close they are to the Sun, the gravitational pull of the Sun is much greater than the planets. Thus, if any entity tried to make itself the moon of one of these planets, the Sun's exertion would pull it away. This is the same reason they don't have rings, as any debris would be plucked away by the Sun. Number 2. Gravity Another major thing that is thought about when it comes to planets we might colonize is gravity. How much gravity a planet exerts will drastically affect its inhabitants and the planet itself. In the case of Mercury, the planet is one that has gravity 62% less than that of Earth, which means that if you weighed 100 pounds on Earth and somehow got to Mercury, your body weight, not including the spacesuit of course, would equal just 38 pounds. That means that you would be able to go and jump very high on the surface of the planet, but it also means that because of the reduced gravity you would have to work very hard in order to ensure that your bones don't become brittle and weak due to the lesser forces exerted on it. Number 1. Could we live on Mercury? One of humanity's greatest things is the ability to think about possibilities. And when it comes to space, the possibility that everyone talks about is being able to live on other planets. Most agree that Mars is going to be the first planet we colonize. But what about Mercury? Could we live there? Technically speaking, we could if we had the right amount of technology. It would be possible to shield ourselves from the sun and the massively fluctuating temperatures, which would be one of the biggest initial hurdles for colonizing there. However, the disadvantages of trying to live there far outweigh any pluses. True, we would have almost unlimited solar power, so that would be a plus. However, with no long-term atmosphere, as noted earlier, a planet that is only two-fifths the size of Earth, the tidally locked rotation, the supreme lack of gravity, soil that very likely won't support growth of crops and more, we'd have an even harder time colonizing Mercury than we would colonizing Mars and colonizing Mars is going to be quite an endeavor. Could it be possible one day to colonize Mercury? Absolutely. With the right technology, anything is possible. But will we colonize Mercury? That's another story. Thanks for watching everyone. What did you think of these facts about Mercury and the history of how we've tried to learn more about the planet? Do you think like you know more about the planet than you did before? What was your favorite fact or figure about it? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.